much for joining me on this video. I'm glad that you're here and I'm already keeping my fingers crossed that what I'm going to tell you today is going to answer a few questions if you found similar things happening in your collection with regards to your novelty fowls. Also with other orchids, I'm using a novelty phalaenopsis though because the signs and symptoms are extremely obvious to see. But if you see similar things happening to your other orchids, regardless of the genus, know that this will also apply. Let me know in the comments, point by point, if this has been of any help to you. Also, let me know if you feel that it is another symptom altogether from what I'm going to be talking about. Okay, all that out of the way, this is Phalaenopsis Tabasco Tex, has been in my collection almost four years now. Doing well, has bloomed for me, is currently a growing a keiki with a secondary leaf coming. But the elephant in the room, I'll get that out of the way straight away, <laughs> let's clear him out of here, is the light spotting that you can see on its latest leaf. Very, very obvious to tell. Now, this can be magnesium deficiency straight out of the gate. There's no doubt about it. This is a definite possibility of magnesium deficiency as the leaf grew. Knowing your orchid is one of the fundamental things when it comes to analyzing your symptoms. So I'm going to tell you what happened with this orchid and why I believe it's a combination of two things because one does not exclude the other. This orchid cannot tolerate temperatures below 18 degrees Celsius. My setup is Lekka and self-watering, which brings evaporative cooling into the pot as well, something I have to consider. However, this orchid has been with me long enough. I consider it somewhat acclimated and we kind of work in a sort of harmony so that she can survive my conditions because I do not supplement with heaters. I do not supplement with heat mats. So the splotches for me are, yes, magnesium deficiency. I will definitely confirm that. But there's a secondary thing going on here, and that is cold. This is not necessarily cell damage due to cold, but we are getting close to that. The colder temperatures in my current circumstances throughout the winter will contribute to the cells not functioning properly as a leaf grows. And then you can get these blotches. If this did not have a magnesium deficiency, you would get the blotches anyway. But the two kind of go hand in hand, magnesium and growth, even though it is a mobile element, if there is too much growth happening too fast and suddenly it gets cold very quickly, which was the case in my case, the temperature changed from October to November while this leaf was growing, that will contribute to the fact that the cells cannot keep up. They are still programmed by the hormones to be in growth mode. Suddenly the temperatures drop, which was a 24 hour differential, way too fast for any hormones to react. The leaf continues to grow and then the uptake of the magnesium is somewhat slowed down because bingo, the temperatures have dropped. Is this a problem for my orchid? No, it is not. Can it be corrected? For as long as the temperatures do not drop any further and the affected cells in here can just hold on and not break down completely. Can this problem be corrected? Absolutely it can. It'll take a long, long time though. It can be corrected with just magnesium soaks over an extended period of time, but the metabolism of any orchid is so slow that this correction will take a considerable amount of time. The magnesium deficiency is also that comes to mind because it started to grow a secondary little plantlet on the side right at the moment that the temperature started to drop and you can see similar symptoms happening on this leaf. It is in the process of growing another little new leaf in the center, so my Tabasco Tex is not going to be deterred just because it is colder than it would prefer. This is really a kind of a conundrum that some people have when they do not supplement with heat or heat mats because you can see the deficiency happening, but also the temperatures are not conducive to progressive growth on a consistent basis. So my application for magnesium soaks is very, very limited, very, very low parts per million very low temperatures, slows everything right down, absorption rate, correction rate, etc. But again, the orchid will be okay if a little bit unsightly. But the cold temperatures and the growth pattern is something that segues straight into the next symptom I want to bring to your attention in case you see this happening on your leaves. This is a leaf from previous years. 
and you can see that there are some kind of ridges going on here. You can sometimes get these leaves when you get them out of the box straight from the nursery or whatever, you will see this kind of ridging happening. And that is simply because of stress, the orchid stops growing, the temperatures dropped, not enough fertilizer, acclimating in its new environment. It's not like you can gauge the age of a tree by counting the rings, when did what happen, until you've had the orchid long enough. But if you were to buy a novelty phalaenopsis come spring and you're ready to enjoy the leaves, because we buy them for the beauty of the foliage even while they're not in bloom, and your orchid comes out of the box with this right here, please know that everything's okay. If it were mechanical damage, you would see like a scar going in. This is not mechanical damage. This is a history of what the orchid was susceptible to during her past years. Whether it was at the nursery and everything had to readjust, acclimating will also cause these little ridges in the leaf. It is not a detriment to the orchid. You can also see the leaf was a little narrower from the previous leaves. So acclimating, media change, repotting, etc. All these factors can have an effect, and especially if the leaf is still growing when the temperatures are cooling down. Mechanical damage looks like this. When the leaves get too long, you put the orchid on the shelf, and then all of a sudden, you know, you keep abrading the tip, and bit by bit, the cells will collapse, and this would be a classic mechanical damage symptom here. Eventually, the leaf will be absorbed, but this is gonna take years and years unless a pest gets in there and then takes it out. You can cut it if you want. I prefer to avoid any possible cuts. It's always too risky. If this orchid is just going to have a little brown tip on the leaf, then that is fine by me. Same on the other side. The shelf is touching the leaf constantly. So we have a similar situation here, but this again is not a detriment to the orchid. There is no rot, there is no decay, it is dry. Now, I'm going to show you one more little symptom that you might be seeing on your orchids, whether it is Phalaenopsis. Again, for the purposes of demonstration, Phalaenopsis show the signs very, very easily, which then can be taken over onto other orchids for a diagnosis. This is my Leodoro Sweet Memory. Gorgeous orchid also has been with me the same amount of time as my Tabasco Tex. And you can see from previous years, how I'm still correcting the magnesium deficiency in the leaves. Right, what's going on with this orchid? And have you got a similar situation and you're wondering what you're doing wrong? This is the newest leaf it has grown. And this leaf, obviously, same time frame when it grows, it starts to drop in temperature. Same conditions as my Tabasco text. And you see the curvature of the leaf here. It is not flat anymore. You see how it curls down? That is another symptom of cold. Not a lack of humidity because I had 95% humidity starting November all the way through to the end of December. Now it's all petered out a little bit more to something normal of 70% humidity. So lack of humidity is not why this is happening. Some leaves, when they're extremely broad and mature and large, they will start to curl in. You will see that on cattleyas as well, that the end of the leaf starts to curl just like this one did here, because this is what happened in the year 2020. Same, same symptom. The leaf is absolutely fine, but you can see that because of the cold, it started to bend inwards and curl. So the cells aren't damaged. You can see the leaf is functioning perfectly. It's just another symptom. Don't think your orchid needs more water. On the contrary, if it gets colder and colder, start to back off on the water and just water as needed so that in my case, for example, the LECA doesn't dry out, seeing as I'm growing this in LECA and self-watering. Here we have classic case of sun damage. So that is something to be considered. You see the leaf is still functioning, but the more unrecognizable symptoms are the ones that I just mentioned to you. Magnesium deficiency is very clear to see, but even if you provide your orchid with enough magnesium, the same symptoms will appear if it gets too cold 
too quickly and let's just say even in your controlled environment you were not able to adjust the temperatures quick enough there will be signs of blotches on the leaves that is a symptom of near cell collapse but not total cell collapse has exactly the same symptoms as magnesium deficiency so it's not always a case of well i need to pump in more magnesium it's a case of knowing when the temperatures drop what is these orchids preferences where did something go wrong and then react accordingly in my case with my tabasco text i will not exactly be able to raise any of the temperatures but i will definitely of course continue to be mindful about the fact that it needs more magnesium which is a procedure i'm going to be correcting for the next coming years <laughs> but at least it is a procedure that I can correct. So I'm really wondering if this was helpful, if you have similar symptoms in your collection and you were sort of like semi-guessing, not knowing, or if you just needed a confirmation, you already sort of had a gut feeling what was going on. I hope that this video and what I have shown you and talked about provides that confirmation that everything's okay with your orchid and you are able to move forward, correcting or increasing the temperatures either way. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other diagnosis that I did not mention. Would be very helpful to anybody watching this video who then goes to the comments for further information. And I thank you for that in advance. Which leaves me with just one more thing to say, and that is that I wish you a beautiful day on one condition, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.